let's look at how to configure a Cisco router for SSH communication. So we have Packet Tracer here, and we want to configure it so that we can talk to these devices. So first of all, I'm going to take a 1941 router, just plug right here, and I'm going to have a switch because switches are kind of nice to have in between. And then I'll go ahead and add a PC for the communication. Then I'll wire everything up with straight cables. So run the switch and then run from this. Just run to the router. So put a gig of Ethernet 0, 1. All right. So at this point, we need to go ahead and configure the router first. So the router we're going to have be in the 192.168.0.0/24 network. So I'll go ahead and configure the interface first. So I'll do comp t and I'll do int it was on G01 G0 slash 1 and I will do a no shut first to activate the interface IP address 192.168.0.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0 and I'll put a description on it because you should usually do that and just say this is the access uh, interface usually you want a better name than that but that's okay um, it's now active and ready to go however in order to configure SSH there are a couple of steps I need to do now first I need a name we well, could say well we have router as a name but it refuses to do it with router so you want to have a different name so the host name let's call it R1 then we need to set up a, well, the rest of this stuff right here. Um, you want to have a banner message of the day, just because that's a good thing to have. So authorized users only, and close it with the limiting character there. And we want to have an enable secret. If you don't have an enable secret password here, then once you log in, you will be unable to elevate into a user mode or a, a privilege user mode because you don't have a password here. So enable secret Cisco. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a domain name or set my domain name for my device. So this is going to be part of example.com. So do IP domain name example.com now this is required in order to create my RSA key later just so you know now I'm going to create a username for authentication this is for local authentication so I'll do Joseph that's my name that's my name password is Cisco and then I'm going to go ahead and create my crypto keys crypto key generate RSA it's gonna ask me the size it wants a minimum of 512 however you can't actually create SSH version 2 keys with something that small let's go 1024 it's better size than 512 and it's bigger oh uh, you really only need to do something like 768 for SSH 2 but let's go and do 1024 and then I'll do IP SSH timeout for authentication and we'll set to um, two minutes. And then we're going to change it to IP SSH version two because we want to be in version two. All right, now we want to configure our device so that you can actually log in using SSH. Now that we have SSH set up and working. So I'll go into my VTY lines. So the line VTY04. And I'll do a transport input SSH. 
So we're going to use the SSH protocol for our input. And we're going to log in using our local accounts. So log in local. And that is now taken care of. I can go and look at how everything's set up right now. You can type in show SSH and you can see that both of my servers, the SSH version one and version two, don't have any connections to them. But are we running both of them? Well, we can do a show IP SSH. IP SSH. And you can see that SSH is enabled for, for version two. And it has this authentication timeout thing and authentication retries. All right, so we're good there. We'll go ahead and move that kind of off the screen a bit. And we'll pull up our PC and make sure our PC can connect to the router. So the first thing you do is you configure a default gateway. However, there is no other network, so it, it doesn't actually make a difference what you put here or even, even if you leave it blank. My IP address would be 192.168.0.10 and the default subnet mask works perfectly for this. So now I am ready to go. Over here, I can click my command prompt and type ping 192.168.0.1 just to make sure I can ping the router. And you can see the router is pingable. That's great. Now we want to actually connect. So you scroll down here to the Telnet SSH client and we're going to do a connection type of SSH. We are going to connect to 192.168.0.1 and we're going to use the username Joseph. And I'll click connect. And then it prompts me for my passcode, my password, which is Cisco. It prints out the message of the day telling me authorized users only. If I have set my enable secret password, then I am able to elevate privileges with my password here. And at this point, I can do things like show IP SSH and see that I have SSH running. I can do show SSH. And I can see my connections. You can see that I am currently connected through. Uh, and there we go. And that is how you configure a machine for SSH communication. Or router for SSH communication.